Few Supreme Court decisions in recent memory have so captured the attention of the American public as Citizens United. To help me explore the road to Citizens United, as well as consider the potential paths leading beyond it, is Timothy Kuhner, Associate Law Professor at Georgia State University College of Law. Professor Kuhner's scholarship has been cited in the Yale Law Journal, Harvard Law Review, and the American Journal of Comparative Law. And he is most recently the author of Capitalism v. Democracy, Money in Politics and the Free Market Constitution. Welcome, Tim. Thanks, Thanks Peter. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure. Let's, let's go back to the beginning, as it were. Uh, 1976, Supreme Court, the case Buckley v. Vallejo. Um, setting the tone for money and politics cases, what did it say about how the political and the economic spheres should interact in our democracy? It said in it, what it accomplished mm -hmm. was to eliminate the distinction between the political and the economic spheres. Okay. And it said so in fairly open language. So this is a case about the first comprehensive federal election campaign act uh, at the mm -hmm. federal level that mm -hmm. had ever been passed in US history. And it contained contribution limits to campaigns, to candidates, to parties. It contained expenditure limits by candidates, by outside speakers, and so on. It contained a limited uh, public financing system for presidential campaigns. And the part that bothered the Supreme Court the most was uh, the expenditure limits. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in the realm of expenditure limits, you're talking about limiting the total volume of economic power that the, the candidates and the parties are putting out there. And in examining that question, the Supreme Court basically said, democracy is a market. Uh -huh. Money is speech. Political equality is an, is an unconstitutional rationale to limit this market. And that the entire United States was forced into this free market constitutional realm, mm -hmm. which we hadn't occupied before. And so it was really a radical, radical moment. Certainly other advanced democracies are dealing with this issue as well, would be my thought. And, and certainly their intention is to also protect the freedom of speech of their citizens. So how, how have they gone about limiting the corrosive effects of money in politics. It's very common to have that free media time. It's common to also have some uh, postage and mailing subsidized. Yep. And it's very common to have roughly 50% of political parties' election-related expenses, if not their general operating expenses, yep. covered through government subsidies. Wow. Um, so those are common methods. Uh, limitations of contributions from private individuals, limitations on corporate contributions and corporate expenditures vary quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And there's very respectable democracies that don't limit those sources too, too strictly. It's just that they offset them with significant public financing. Right. And so the US is so interesting. You know, we have this very privatized model of governance because we don't have good subsidies. The only federal races we really subsidize are presidential, and, and those subsidies are now almost insignificant, and, right. and most candidates are going to be turning them down, I think, going forward. The Congress is entirely privatized in mm -hmm. that sense. It's mm -hmm. $10 million to become a senator, $1 million on average to become a member of the House. Thanks so much for speaking with me today. Thanks so much for your book, and I will look forward to the next book on Citizens United. Thanks, Peter. It was a, it was a pleasure for me. Amongst the important things in life we're told money can't buy are health, love, and happiness. I suppose at the time it went without saying that democracy belonged on the list as well. Our mistake that we took it for granted. The encouraging news today is that 70% of we Americans, of all political hues, disagree with the Citizens United ruling. That's a good starting point. To continue that journey, however, we need to cultivate activism, and persistence. For while equality and access may be our birthrights, they have never been conceded without demand. Let's get working. On behalf of Tim Kuhner, I'm Peter Bermudis for Arlington Public News.